Okay, let's talk, let's take a close look at the supplies that we're gonna be using for this class. You have two or three kinds of supplies, some that you're gonna purchase and others that you're gonna gather from stuff that you have at home. The list that we've put together is through an art supply company called Dick Blick. And I've given you a shopping list link in D2L. All you have to do is click on that link and it'll take you directly to the cart that has everything already populated and then you just purchase the supplies. If you wanna do a little comparison shopping and maybe find a better price for supplies, then you can try Amazon, you can try uh, Oriental Trading Company. There's any number of uh, places, art supplies or Google, where you can shop for others if you're if you're doing a little price comparison. But the course fees were waived for this summer, and we we know what the course fee assigned to the class is, and so we've kept it within ten dollars of the range. Because normally we we have a lot of the supplies that we provide in class, and students pay forty bucks for a supply fee. And so since you're providing your own supplies, we did the best we could to keep it comparable to what you would pay in the fee for the course supplies. So let's start, let's start with the supplies that you're gonna find on the shopping list with Dick Blick art supplies. And first thing is you're gonna find a set of acrylic paint. They are there are six pints of acrylic paint, and they are you can mix any number of colors from those six set those sets of colors you will find that i mean we are using a lot of paint in this class but you'll still have paint left over and um, this is the cheaper more economical option than using tubes of paint which often run out um, on several of the applications that we're using in class and you then you just have to go buy more so you're going to end up with a little bit of this left well with probably with a good number amount of this left over but it it's perfect transition and use in the classroom it's safe for children and it's a good price point excuse me for um for our purposes also on the list is a glue stick you may have one at home so you could delete that from the cart if you do next is a set of paint brushes your handles, I think, are going to be green, and they're going to be short-handled brushes. But these are good quality brushes for the classroom. They're made of hog bristle. They'll last you forever if you take good care of them and keep them clean and don't leave them sitting in water or with paint in them. So we'll talk about brush care soon because good investing in good quality brushes is important for a classroom. It'll last, make them last for a really long time. And then let me turn the camera here. You're gonna get a large drawing pad from Dick Plick uh, with paper. Normally in the classroom setting, I would recommend buying reams of paper or individual sheets, but we have a project that we're gonna do using the back cardboard of the drawing pad. So that's why we opted for a drawing pad because we could get some flexibility and, and a little more mileage out of that um, as a supply. Everything else, I think, uh, oh, there's one more thing and that's a mask form. I don't have a sample of that here. Um, it looks just like a, a plain white Halloween mask. And so that's also included in your set, but that's included in the list of uh, purchased supplies. Let's talk about supplies that you're gonna have around the house that you need to put together uh, in, as expanding your kit. You're gonna need some yarn. It doesn't matter if it's synthetic or wool. It can be any color. It can be any size or shape. And I recommend more than one color. So if you have some laying around, then you can use that. If you don't, then thrift stores have this stuff in abundance. Uh, I'm betting you have a friend or a neighbor that has a lot. You can you can use string if you that or paper. So yarn. You're gonna need some random weird things like this. These are old gift cards. Uh, a couple of those, maybe like a comb or a fork, and stuff like this. These are gonna be texture makers. We're gonna use these in adding texture to paint. And so you can, there's any number of things that you, even your fingernails that you could find around the house 
that's going to satisfy that purpose. If you have some old house paint brushes like this, this is an old one, grab one and add it to your collection. It's going to help move paint around pretty quickly. You're going to need a pair of scissors. I recommend using child size scissors if you have some. It's important that we use the supplies that we would use in the classroom for the work in this course. If you don't have a pair of child size scissors, then regular scissors will do just fine. But I recommend using the material you would have children use as much as possible. Some pencils. I have both mechanical and regular. You just want to make sure it's sharp. That, it's going to need to be sharpened. A compass. If you don't have a compass, then you can find these at Dick Blick, and I'll add them to the list if, if you want. But you can also use a push pin and a string for this purpose if you don't have a compass. These are two different kinds. They're just convenient and handy to make um, circles with. You're gonna need a ruler. Any ruler is fine, a plastic ruler. This one's a metal ruler. Um, if you don't have a ruler, you can use the edge of a book. Just You just need a straight edge of some kind. You're gonna need some containers. And I have, a, this is a one example of a container. It's an old ice cream tin. You can use a glass, you can use a mason jar. It doesn't matter. All this is gonna do is hold water for when we're painting. So it just you just need something open and that can hold a little bit of water, maybe about this much. And so you need a, a container like that. You also need some lidded containers. This is just a glad, kind of plastic throwaway container that you might put your lunch in and take it or your leftovers and you stick them in the in the fridge. We're going to be making our own glue and we're going to be making paper clay and Dr. Melferber is going to go over um, those two processes but you need to be able to store that material in the refrigerator to keep it fresh. And so uh, anything that has a container, whether that's a mason jar, a baby food jar, an old spaghetti sauce jar that's been washed out, will be just fine as long as you can put a lid on it and stick it in the fridge. So some lidded containers. Now, we're gonna show you guys how to make some of your own supplies, including glue. If you wanna bypass that and you have a large amount of glue, you can just use school glue. Um, that's what we're using for paste paper and paper paint, but we're trying to show you guys how to how to use art supplies and, and make them on a dime because we know funding for classroom supplies is at an all-time low. I recommend that if it's in your budget and you want to do this in the classroom that you consider getting something like this. This is an entire gallon of school glue and Dick Blick sells it with a pump which makes it really convenient for use in the classroom. But remember, we're gonna show you all how to make your own glue um, in the next section, or in our first science integration section in the course. For that, you'll need some flour and some water, a pot on the stove and something to stir with, and a container to put it in. So a heat source is what you're gonna need. The second make your own supply that we're gonna make is paper clay. And so you need some old newspaper, some scrap, newspaper. Um, we're going to tear it up and you'll need a blender. Um, we'll tear it up into little pieces and we're going to chop it up in a blender and make make our own clay to make masks and stuff like that with. And then finally, I recommend that you, well not finally, but save the box that your supplies come in. We're going to need this cardboard. If you, if you are watching this video after your supplies have already come in, then you, I'm sure you can find another box, but we're gonna need the cardboard to make a loom later on. So again, we're using everything at our disposal to make different projects for this class. Okay. You're gonna need a palette. Let me turn around and I'm just gonna show you the one I have in the floor here. A palette can be made out of anything. You can use a, a plate, you, this is an actual artist palette that um, is just made of smooth metal. You don't need anything fancy to mix your paint on, and we're going to be doing a lot of paint mixing in this class. If you have a baking sheet 
that makes a perfect palette. So you don't need to buy a special palette. You have plenty of things like this. A lot of elementary schools will use disposable um, paper plates or styrofoam plates. I don't recommend that. Number one, they're not sustainable. And number two, they are not easy for children to mix their paint on. Something like this is a lot more practical. It provides a lot of space. You can see it in comparison to the paint pints right there, how big it is. You need something so that children can mix a lot of, they can mix their colors and actually really move their arms and hands on it. So a, a baking sheet would be just perfect for this. And you can usually find those at thrift stores, pretty cheap. They're easy to wash off and just rinse it off with water or a paper towel. And then you can use them over and over again um, and not have to replenish and spend money on throwaway supplies. And finally, I have a bag here, uh, just a, a canvas bag. I recommend that you get a box or a bag or something like that that you can put your supplies in. If you're not able to, maybe you're working on the kitchen table and you need to um, take it down every day so that you can eat dinner on your kitchen table, then get something that you can put all of your supplies in in one location. It'll help you keep track of everything and um, stay organized. I do. I think if you have the option to leave everything set up, that's great. Then you have a little studio space. But you may need to create just a traveling studio, in which case you need a little bag or a box or something like that. Okay? So that's it for the supplies that we need for this class. We will go over as we do each project, what that what supplies that individual project requires. So you'll still get a refresher um, before we start the project. But I do recommend that you, you also need um, a printer and paper. But I recommend that you do your best to get all of your supplies organized before beginning the course. It just makes things go a little smoother and helps you work a little faster. Okay, see you next time.